Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, we're talking with Nick Turner, a lecturer at Queen Mary's College in Hampshire, England, and a consultant with NT Esports. Our topic is Esports Across the Pond, Educating and Inspiring UK Students. Welcome, Nick. Hello, thanks for having me. It's lovely to be on the show. All right. So what do you teach at Queen Mary's College? College. So yeah, at QMC, we, we're the leading provider of esports uh, education in the UK. Um, and we teach 16 to sort of 19 year olds um, on a formal basis with a curriculum which involves a total of 20 different units. And the full-time students will do 15 units, of which five are mandatory. They have to do them, and then another 10 optional. But we also run it on a slightly smaller scale so that you have, it, it's like the equivalent of one A-level. So they might do esports as one A-level, and then they might do business studies, and they might do media or maths or two other subjects. Um, and we teach a whole range of things to do with esports. Um, the, the the mandatory units sort of are based around uh, introduction to esports, where we look at organisations, the structure. We look at traditional sports and how that compares to esports. Um, we look at teams, games, tournaments from in the UK and abroad. We then have uh, the second unit, which is skills, performance, and analysis, which is kind of like where we look at the different genres of games that are uh, prominent in esports and then how we analyze those and the students will uh, undertake their own performance analysis, watching their peers play as teams in competitive games so that they can come up with an action plan. They feed that action plan back to the team and then they analyze them again so they can assess the impact. Um, enterprise and entrepreneurship, which is where they have to come up with an idea of an enterprise that they could start up within esports which is kind of, you know, we teach them business at the same time, so the different ways that you can set up companies and, um, you know, PLCs, private limited companies, sole traders, freelancers, etc. Uh, and then they have to create a business plan, a proper business plan with an executive summary, uh, having done all the research, and then they pitch that idea to us, which is always good fun. It's like Dragon's Den. Um, mm. The fourth one is health, well-being and fitness, because we're very sort of like keen to disperse the myth that especially with parents in the all gamers are just teenagers in dark rooms, drinking energy drinks, playing all night. So we were very keen to kind of like show the other side and the importance of it, which is kind of interesting as well, because uh, if you look around the college, if you walk around the college first thing in the morning and you look at the students doing lots of other subjects, there are lots of students who are half asleep eyes are shut where they've been gaming all night whereas you don't see it in the esports classes because they know they learn that it's not a good way to progress it's not a good way to develop um you know so we're installing some sort of some values into what they uh what they do which is you know which is quite good and then they're the kind of like the key units the mandatory units and then you have uh the optional units which are kind of I would say slightly more practical in their nature. So they do events management. So I have to put on esports events, you know, whether that's like a, a, a little land tournament or something. They'll do live stream broadcasting, uh, content creation, video production, games design. So in the games design unit, they're going to be designing um, a first person shooter. Um, and then there's other things like branding and nutrition. So there's a whole kind of plethora of um subjects that are all interrelated with esports which makes that esports qualification great for transferable skills because they can take the business side the financial side um the health sides you know plus the gaming kind of side um you know and it's not a gaming course we don't teach them how to be pro players um you know it's very much about the industry and the business because what's happened around the world but certainly you know here in the UK is that we've got more more and more companies setting up more organizations developing the the industry is growing exponentially and 
we've just been stealing people and experts and specialists from other industries to fill the mm. hole, fill the gap. So the idea is, is that we're now starting that generation of training people and educating people to go straight into that workplace, go into into the esports industry. Um, so there's, you know, there's plenty to there's plenty to go at. Um, and in the last, it was launched three years ago, and there was probably about ten colleges that that, that started running it, of which we were one. Um, and now it's closer to two hundred colleges. So there are esports students across the UK now. Um, you know, looking to, to, to progress. So uh, it's all very positive and exciting. Okay, fantastic. Well, I think the people in the United States will need to hear a little bit about how UK education system works. Because when we talk about 16 to 19 year olds and college, that seems quite foreign to people in the US as well as A-levels. And yeah. so can you explain that? Yeah, so, so the way the education system works in the UK, we have um, school, which is compulsory from uh, four through till 16. So everybody has to go to school. That's, that's the, if, you know, if you don't go to school, you get punished. There are, there, there are fines in place, et cetera. Um, and at 16, they take GCSEs, which are a level two qualification. So once they've taken their GCSEs, they then have to either be in education, employment, or training. Um, so most people, the majority of people at 16, go on to college, which is a two-year, uh, generally a two-year study program. And then in that two years, that's where they do their A-levels, which is the next level up, level three. Um, or they do what's known as BTEX, which is what the eSport is, which is a vocational qualification on the same level as, as A-levels, but A-levels are more kind of exam-based and um, lots of people see them as more academic, which isn't a view that anyone who delivers and does BTEX thinks, but they go through that process of college and then once they finish that course, that's when they go to university for three years to do level four, level five, level six. And then at that point you graduate. Um, and after graduation, you can, you can, study further in terms of a master's degree um and or a postgraduate diploma or something like that so that's the kind of that's the way that the the education system works uh in the uk um and yeah so 16 to 19 they don't have to be in college but they do have to be doing something um in terms of developing their their skills for for employment so what type of students are attracted to this program? Or is it gamers only or others? It's interesting. So when we, when we first started running the course in terms of recruitment, we were quite surprised in the first year at the, at the variety of people who, who, who joined. Um, and what we found was that 99% of them did gain. Of those, um, probably 15% you would consider quite serious gamers, um, you know, and were ranked and were playing in, 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 in tournaments. The majority just enjoyed gaming, and there was a few that hardly gamed at all, but they wanted to learn about the industry. Um, and it's, it's important when we have uh, our open days and we speak to parents that we explain that it's not a gaming course because we also had sort of issues with people just joining and then they were really disappointed that they weren't just playing games all day long <laughs> and despite the fact that we were telling them that's not what's going to happen this that's not what this course is about um you know they they there was still that perception whereas now we have a, a really interesting range of students that take the course we had you know a, a student last year that took esports alongside law and um business studies and they wanted to be a lawyer so they were going to go on to university to study law but the reason they took esports is that they wanted to be a lawyer in esports because mm. their interest and passion in in esports um we have a lot of students that take esports and business as well um, because i think a lot of people see the opportunity and the money 
all the potential earnings that they could make and, and the way that the industry is expanding. So they see opportunity to generate and create business. So we have a lot of entrepreneurial types that, that take the course. And, you know, just at QMC in the last uh, three years, we've got three different groups of people who've set up enterprises themselves, um, in the, it, mainly in the sense of teams, you know, like small organizations where they have a number of different rosters. Um, and we had one of our um, students in his first year at, at college, he set up a team and they competed in a, uh, this was during COVID, and they used the facilities at the college to compete in a fortnight tournament and won about £70,000. Oh, my uh, goodness. And, and, you know, that's a 17-year-old. Um, sure. And it's, but those are the things that are, that are inspirational. You know, they're the things that other students see and think, wow, you know, that's unbelievable, you know, and, and, and so others just kind of, that's what they want to do. So we're guiding them through that pathway um, to show them that they can do that. They've, they've got things to learn. And we're, you know, as well as working it in a lecturing capacity, in a teaching capacity, we're very much mentors. For, for our students you know they they come to us with their ideas and we get them to pitch their business to us all their ideas and say you know tell me what you're doing how are you yeah. how are you doing that what's your money you know and you mentioned um dragon's den which u.s um our u.s version is sharks shark tank and and so i know that people watching might not know what that is so that's kind of interesting <laughs> why don't we show the video and you can tell us what we're watching Okay, so this was this this was just a day at college. This is the streaming room really, where we've got we've got two things going on in there. We've got people streaming, students streaming, and students shoutcasting. And then in the first arena, we've got one group, and they're doing performance analysis. So there's teams playing, and then they've got their classmates are watching and analysing, so that they can then feed back and do uh, do their performance analysis. And then as you go through the through the building here, and we go into the main arena. Um, in here, we've got students playing the games that the students in the first room are shoutcasting on. So they're all involved in different ways um, with kind of like three or four different elements of esports. Um, and it was just one of those afternoons where I was teaching in one arena, my colleague was teaching in another, and I've kind of walked between the two and gone, oh, this is this is amazing. Like, it's all going off. You know, there's there's... They're all engaged, you know, they're kind of like, they're all doing what they need to be doing, but they're learning at the same time. So, um, you know, that was, it, it was quite a nice video. And the, the, the other times that is really exciting is when we have the, on a Wednesday afternoon, we compete in the student, uh, the British Esports Student Championships. So both of those arenas are full and we have teams competing against other colleges around the country. Um, to try and qualify for the land finals uh, at the end of the year in Nottingham, which is which is also an enrichment. So we have students at the college who don't study esports, and they're doing other subjects, but they're really good players. So they try out at the start of the year to get into the teams, um, and then they go they go off and you know and compete in the finals. And I think we had more teams than anyone else in the finals this year, which is always good because we're kind of like the leading college. Everyone just expects QMC to be the best at everything. The reality is in terms of probably what we deliver teaching wise and the facilities that we've got, we are a hundred percent leading the way. Um, but across the country, as you can imagine, there are some very, very talented young gamers, um, you know, and, and we don't win everything and we don't expect to win everything, but it's it's really nice when we do. What what titles are is your college competing in? Yeah, so, so we compete in whatever the, British Esports Federation um, set up. So currently it's Valorant, Overwatch, League of Legends and Rocket League. So they're the four. And we're obviously restricted by age. You know, we can't, we can't um, have, we can't be playing games that are over 18s, um, which annoys some of the students because they'd, they'd love to be playing. Um, so those four, um, you know, we, we compete in um, every, every week on a Wednesday from kind of mid-September. And then the land finals are uh, take place in uh, at the end of the year in kind of June, June time, uh, which is nice as well, because, you know, they all get their 
jerseys with the game tags and we all go away for the weekend um so you know that's a that's a really nice kind of like element but we also just have other enrichments like extracurricular activity with esports where we have just escapism so any students from around the, the college can come and just play any games no you know not competitive we just enjoy the facilities we have a couple of different minecraft sessions that we run as well um you know which attracts a lot of interest so we just try to maximize the, the the amazing facilities that we've got. Terrific. Um, and people watching this will be inspired to uh, go to your college, I'm sure, or something similar. So um, you mentioned um, health. And so we have some pictures. Uh, let's bring up the one where people are, are actually uh, relaxing or laying down <laughs> what are we looking at yeah so, so so on this one uh the students are doing deep muscle relaxation therapy um and i just happened to I, I was teaching in the arena next door and i walked uh walked past the room and kind of had a double take um looked at the, the, the lecturer and he kind of like gave me the thumbs up as much to say this is good isn't it because i'm just like i'm not doing much now um, and and they all they all asleep, you know, because of that kind of like right. How do you how do you calm down from the stress? How you know if you're if you're angry with a game or you know you're you're or tired or whatever? How do you break out from um, just how, you know drinking energy drinks and staying up all night? You need to learn the techniques and the methods to take control of of, of your personal well being. And so um, you know Matt Johnson, who who did that session, was doing that, um, and I spoke to one of the first years today who did that lesson this week and they all fell asleep as well mm -hmm. um so you know that, that, that's my kind of teaching I'd be quite happy not that they do fall asleep in some of my lectures but they're not supposed to so uh, you know I can't claim any credit for, for deep relaxation therapy <laughs> so you have some other um uh things you do um uh to promote communication let's look at the photos um what what are we looking at here yeah so so Obviously, communication is so important in, in any team sport, um, you know, and in particular uh, with esports. So just to try and highlight, you know, we're always trying to look at innovative ways of, of delivering teaching. So we set them a task whereby they had to play Pac-Man. So nice and simple, but they had to have they had a tally chart and it was they had options of verbal, nonverbal, and then non-physical. So that they all and they had to come up with their own strategies of how they were going to do that. So you could see in those photos, some of them were kind of hand on hand, and there was there was there was they were like tapping and touching, um, like we can see there. You had other people that were stood behind, like tapping backs, um, you know, tapping heads, um, and, and it was because they can't see you either. It enabled us to really kind of like go around the room and and kind of see what they were doing, and then they were recording all of their results to see to come up with the most effective way of of, of communicating without the the normal things that that they do. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of it, it's just trying to bring things into the classroom that they're going to enjoy and they find a bit of fun, but there's a you know there's a, there's a key message behind that. Sure, and let's bring up the um, the Fortnite photo with the colorful um, things. Yeah, can yes. you tell us about that? Yeah, so again, kind of what we, we were uh, talking about strategy. This was this was this was Matt one of Matt's lessons, and talking about strategy within uh, esports and and in Fortnite, the things that you can and you can't do. You know, like building. So it was a, it was basically a live battle royale. Um, you know, that that was the setup whereby they were put in teams uh, or, or quads, and then they had to attack, defend, build, hide, um, you know, and kind of like work out different ways. And they were, they had like things that they would, they with light balls that they were throwing, um, you know, because then you're thinking about spatial awareness and distance. And, you know, if you can't throw the ball that far, then there's no point trying to attack from behind your barrier if you can't actually offload your, your ammo. Um, so again, you know, it's just, 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 just things to, to get them out of the classroom and thinking about it in a, in a broader context, really. Sure. And, and there was a photo of a, a visitor who came and, uh, 
who happened to be a, a champion. Um, let's bring that one up. Uh, yeah. Tell us so, one. so we've got Danny Squibbs there, who who was a former pro uh, Rocket League player. He works for Guild Esports, which is uh, David Beckham's uh, organization, the first esports company in the UK to float on the stock exchange as a PLC. And Guilds have been in on a number of occasions. Um, and Danny was also the, we had the Commonwealth Games here in Birmingham over the summer and esports was introduced as a pilot, which was which is great for all things esports. Um, and Danny was the coach for the England team for the Rocket League. Um, and again, I, you know, I was there as a guest of the British Esports Federation and it was great to see kind of like see him in action as opposed to in the classroom. Uh, but also there was, you know, there were a couple of our students there that I didn't know were going. And the next thing kind of like my Twitter pings and sort of like, because there's taking a photo of me speaking to somebody else, but they then get to see it like at those events, they get to see the, the people in real life who have been in and spoken to them. And that's when they realize how kind of fortunate they are at QMC because we have everybody wants to come in everyone wants to be part of it you know we, we've had Excel in guild in we have a partnership with fanatic um which is new for this year which is really exciting whereby they deliver stuff for us we get to take them up there to their head uh, headquarters and that kind of like industry engagement is is really interesting and the head of the British, he's the founder and CEO of the British Esports Federation, um, features in when we're talking about the way that esports works in the UK, you know, we bring Chester into to, to that so we can explain what who he is and what he does. But the photo that they see of him is him stood right outside our big QMC sign because he came down to launch the facility. You know, and it's we was it Monday we had uh, guests from the um, from the Middle East um, coming in to talk about the investment that they were going to put in out there, um, along with the chief education advisor from the British Esports Federation, and you know it's an eye opener to the students because they almost take it for granted because it's it's their local college and they think this is great, but they all also think that everywhere else is like this. Um, you know, and so when you get all these guests in, A, it inspires them and they network, you know, you know, we talk to them about LinkedIn and sort of like the next thing they've, oh, I connected with, with Danny on LinkedIn and like, and he messaged me and, you know, and they get really excited and, and those, that kind of like that excitement is the things that leads to inspiration. And then hopefully, you know, we're going to have some really successful graduates. I, I'm not hopefully, I'm very confident that we will see a lot of our students in really good positions within esports in the UK. Sure. Further beyond. Right. Um, and our girl, young women, are they uh, in your pro program? Yep. So we so so it's open to all. So we have, and again, that's one of the beauties of um, of esports is that inclusivity. Um, we have males, females studying the course in terms of the competitive uh, scene. We have female teams this year. We have mixed teams, um, and the photos that you just saw there were, uh, were of the LAN final in Nottingham for the British Esports uh, Student Championships. And you can see in the Overwatch team, so Overwatch Division 1 is like the pinnacle of, of the championships. This is our team, and we have two, uh, two girls, three boys, um, and of those, four of them study esports. Uh, no, three of them study esports, and two of them don't. They're just in the team and study elsewhere in the college. And one of the highlights for me was watching the stream when they walked out onto stage and the, the chat on Twitch went mad because we had two girls. And it's like, oh, no way. They've got two girls in their team. <laughs> um, and, for, you know, and, and I'm sat there kind of like with the biggest smile that you can possibly imagine because it's like, yes, we have. And then we won. And it's sort of like, you know, it's just goes to show. And then after the after they won, you know, they get presented the, the, the trophies and they'll get interviewed, um, you know, and it's a really good platform for, for those girls to encourage other girls to think, OK, it's not just it's not just boys that could compete. You know, we've we've competed at the highest level in the student championships and we've won. Um, 
and and you know and another thing that came from that victory which was um something that we promote quite heavily in terms of esports with parents is all of those things that esports brings in terms of personal development you know like strategic thinking communication um dexterity and quick thinking all of those things that, but, but one of the most important things is confidence because you have you can have students who aren't necessarily that outgoing and uh, and that confident but they're very confident in their gaming and then that brings confidence and I had one student who was a first year student last year who was part of that team that won and he's now second year and in the first year he was so quiet he hardly spoke at all um and since he's come back he is a completely different young man and it's so good to see that kind of like level of confidence that that he's now achieved and so now that he's gone into the second year and he's in the team again you know he's he stepped up you know he's he stepped up into like a much more senior kind of like role in the way that the rest of the college see him because you know he's one of our heroes that that, that went and won the student championship so um all of the things that we predicted and hoped for and wanted to demonstrate through the esports qualification and the extracurricular activity you know are coming to fruition uh, and it justifies what we do so we'll wrap this up by having you tell us about your consultancy yeah so so um nt esports is is my consultancy company which is um just basically stemmed from demand really you know i i i i've been in education for a long time i used to have a, a business before i got into education i started to advise an esports company about education um about seven or eight years ago and then jumped out of education to work for that company to kind of like build up esports kind of knowledge and, and get a feel for everything and then jumped back into education when uh, the BTEC was launched, the, the, the qualification. Um, and from that, we just had so many, I had so many people kind of like asking for help and support in terms of setup. How do we set things up? How, you know, what do we do with an arena? How do we get an arena? Um, <clears throat> resources, like how do we teach esports? Because as you can imagine, there's lots of qualified teachers in the UK. There's quite a few people that have been involved in esports, but there's very few trained teachers who have experience in esports. And at QMC, luckily, we have three. There's three of us. Um, and so that kind of stemmed from there, really. And, and uh, you know, and I have colleges set up arenas. They can come to me and we can sort that out for them. Resources for teaching, uh, bringing products to market, you know, where companies have a product that's, that they've designed. But they don't know anything about esports and they don't know how to get into the market. Um, so it's quite varied and it goes kind of like beyond the UK. So I get to, to do things, uh, you know, around around the world, um, which is kind of the passion, I suppose, for me. You know, as I set up my first business when I was 24, which was a radio, uh, a radio business. Um, and I really enjoy that kind of taking ideas from from something on paper and turning that into something that exists in reality and and NT Sports is you know has enabled me to do that um so I'm kind of like I've got a really good a really comfortable life balance at the moment you know I spend part time teaching part time on my consultancy stuff um but it's all esports um and it, it, it's all good so you know and I get to meet lots of nice people and network with lots of nice people like yourself Catherine um, all right, fantastic. So it's all good. Well, well, Nick, thank you so much for being my guest today. And uh, thank you to our viewers for joining today. In two weeks, Tom Leonard, uh, the host of the podcast Gamers Change Lives, will be my guest host. Uh, look forward uh, to an interesting session. And aloha and mahalo.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.